So 99% of algebra students are going to find this problem a little difficult. Now, uh, they actually may be able to solve the problem, but it's probably not going to come without a challenge. So let me explain to you what's going on, and then you can kind of uh, see if you can figure this out. So what we have is a, uh, an equation, and it's uh, xy plus 1 over z minus w is equal to 3 over w. And what I want you to do is to rewrite this uh, equation, okay? And this doesn't really have a lot of meaning to it. It's not like a formula in physics or science or anything like that. It's just a, uh, an equation that has multiple variables. But I want you to rewrite this equation in terms of W. So you're going to have to shuffle around all the other variables, and you're going to have W is equal to something over here, okay? And that something is obviously going to involve uh, X, Y. Uh, Z and some numbers or whatever the case might be. So uh, what we're really looking at here is solving for a specific variable in an equation. Okay, and this kind of falls under the category of working with formulas or something called literal equations. And this is very, very important in algebra. I'm going to show you a couple of basic examples. And of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step in just one second. But uh, I want to see if you can do this. How well are you doing in algebra? If you're doing pretty well, then you should be able to handle this. So go ahead and pause the video. Uh, do this problem. It might take you a minute or two and put your answers into the comment section. Then we'll go ahead and uh, check your work in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And we're going to start off with just some basic examples, okay? So... Again, what we're talking about here is solving for a specific variable when there's multiple variables in an equation. So here we have an equation of a line, and this is in standard form. 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. What if I told you to rewrite this equation in terms of y? Okay, so can you do that? All right, or here we have a basic physics formula. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Can you rewrite uh, this formula in terms of A, okay, solve for acceleration. And here we have rate times times equal to distance. So if I told you to write this in terms of T, can you do that? So let's go ahead and actually work our uh, way this way. All right, so we'll do these real, uh, problems real fast. And actually, if you want to uh, pause the video and just do these real quick, this will be a good check to see if you can handle this more challenging problem. So if I want to solve for T here, you got to think of the R and the D in this particular variable as numbers. So, for example, instead of RT is equal to D, the only thing that we're going to treat as a variable is the, is the variable that we're trying to solve for. So, let's just think of the R, let's say, as a 2, okay? We have our T, and then let's uh, think of the D as, I don't know, let's say 7. Now, I'm just making numbers up. The whole idea here is just to um, get you to understand the uh, kind of the mental procedure when you're solving for a particular variable when there's multiple variables. So if I'm solving for T, I'm only going to think of T as the variable and R and D as just some numbers. It doesn't really make a difference what numbers um, you're going to think of uh, uh, them. Just think of them as numbers. So if I had the equ equation 2T is equal to 7, how would I solve for T? You would be like, oh, don't we just divide both sides of the equation by 2? And you would be absolutely right. Okay, so whatever was in front of the T, we're going to divide that by what was over here. So in this case, uh, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by uh, R. So T, let me write this down here, is equal to D over R. Okay, so I rewrote this formula, RT, or rate times times equal to distance, in terms of T, i.e. time is equal to distance over uh, uh, the rate. Okay, so you're not... Uh, breaking the formula or equation. You're just rewriting it in a different way. So let's go ahead and take a look at this basic example. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we're going to solve for A. So I'm going to think of M and F as numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by M. So force over mass is equal to acceleration. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this problem. Uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. This is a, a very kind of classic um, area 
uh, where a very common area where students, when they're struggling uh, solving systems of equations in algebra one, if you don't know what that is, you're going to study it, and you're using the substitution method, you have to solve for one of the variables in one of the equations. And students struggle with this because they don't understand this topic that we're talking about, how to solve for a particular variable. So let's uh, rewrite this equation in terms of x. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to solve for x. So we're thinking of everything else in terms um, as of uh, a number. So 3 times y, this is just like one number in and of itself. So to solve for x, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3y from both sides of the equation. And I get 2x is equal to 8 minus 3y. So to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. And you get x is equal to 8 minus 3y over 2. Okay, and we can put this in parentheses. And this would be an expression that you would use, for example, when you're uh, doing the substitution method when you're solving for systems of equations. But a lot of students can't uh, do the substitution method properly because they don't know how to solve for a particular variable in a particular equation. So you really got to practice this stuff. So if this right here is kind of hard for you, I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a lot of additional videos on this in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Or you've, you know, you probably want to sign up for one of my algebra courses, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, college algebra, algebra two. I got a ton of them. So you just pick the which, uh, whatever course that you're in in terms of an algebra course. And uh, you know, if you really want to learn this stuff with me, that's what you want to do. But let's get into this problem now. I'm going to go a little bit quick uh, because I don't want to take up too much time. But I really wanted to set the parameters here on what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're going to solve for w. So here's a w here, here's a w here. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, you need to recognize that this is one fraction, okay, that's equal to another fraction. So if you have something like 1 half is equal to 4 over 8, one fraction is equal to another fraction, you can always do the cross product. This is the definition of a, uh, of a proportion. So in other words, when I look here, 1 times 8 that's equal to 2 times 4. So anytime you have a fraction equal to another fraction, you can always cross multiply and start off your work that way. Okay, so if you didn't know that, you got to be, you know, this is why math is so interconnected. You got to be looking for shortcut ways. So here I'm like, oh, one fraction is equal to another fraction. I can go ahead and uh, use the cross product. Now, one thing you have to be very careful about is anytime you have sums and differences in algebra, Oftentimes, there is no parentheses or grouping symbols around these expressions. Go ahead and put them in uh, because if, uh, if you don't see them, you need to add them in. It's going to keep you out of trouble. So I purposely didn't write these um, uh, grouping symbols in because uh, oftentimes you'll see problems where they're not written in. But here's what happens. A student will go uh, W times uh, XY plus 1, and they'll say, oh, the answer is w x y plus one i've probably seen that mistake a hundred thousand times and i'm like oh boy why did they make a mistake well because they you know they forgot to put parentheses around this because if they're like oh w times uh x ply x y plus one they'll write it this way and then they'll be much more inclined to use the distributive property so put those grouping symbols in so we're going to go this way and then we're going to take this three and multiply by z minus w so we got three times z minus w and there we go Okay, so this is the way we this is the way we're going to uh, start off the problem. Now we have really no choice but to use the distributive property, and you got to take this step, and that way we can kind of see what terms we're working with. So w times x y w x y w uh, times one w three times z three z and three times w three w. All right, but where are we taking this problem? Well, we're going to have to get all the w's together because I'm trying to solve for w. So Anything that has a W in it, we're going to have to kind of collect on one side of the equation. So over here, we have a W, X, Y. So we have a W. That's good. That's over here. We're going to keep it over there. We have a W here. And I have this 3W. Let's scoot this over to the other side of the equation. So how can I do that? Well, simply add 3W to both sides of the equation. And you're left with this. Okay, W, X, Y plus W plus 3W is equal to 3Z. Okay, so what are we doing uh, from here? Well, we're looking to simplify anything we can simplify. And here I have 1w and I have 3w, so I can combine like terms. 
So this is 4w. So I have wxy plus 4w is equal to 3z. Okay, we're getting closer. But at this point of the problem, if I want to get w by itself, and I got w intertwined with these terms, I'm going to have to factor out a w. And I can do that because w is a common factor here. So let's factor out w. So I have w times xy plus 4. Okay, so x, w times xy plus 4 is equal to 3z. And now it's pretty easy to get w by itself. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by xy plus 4. And over here, this would be an xy plus 4. And this is the final answer right here. Okay, so uh, w is equal to 3z over xy plus 4. And, uh, of course, if you're able to do this problem, uh, hopefully you're also able to do these problems. I'm pretty sure that was the case as well. But, um, you know, that's very, very good. Okay, you're going to need to know how to work with variables and formulas, um, equations where there's multiple variables. This is such an important skill. Now, if you're completely lost in this, again, start with the basic type of problems, like the ones I showed you, and then work your way up. Okay, so this particular problem might be a little bit uh, difficult. Again, 99% of uh, students that aren't up to speed on their algebra would get pretty lost on uh, doing this type of problem, but you need to know how to do this problem. And hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, consider helping me out by smashing that like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. Uh, but my best math help will always be with the My Math Help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.